Florida, more often than not, going to start to dry things out over the next couple of days, but we do still have some hazards along our coast. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is with you. And in this video, we are going to talk about the relative dry stretch that is coming to central Florida. If you're tuning in from elsewhere across the Sunshine State, we're going to break that down a little bit later in the video. You can kind of scroll across there the timestamps to see the forecast for Tampa, for St. Pete, for Miami, into Pensacola, across the Sunshine State. That's closer to the end of the video. In between, though, we are still going to talk about some big-time issues along the coast. We've been dealing with a little bit of minor coastal flooding brought on by the almost full moon and by a persistent onshore flow again that's been bringing us some kind of again minor flooding but certainly something that's gonna we're gonna talk about and then also the potential again for some thunderstorms across the state of florida but by and large after kind of a wet week for a lot of us we are gonna try to dry things out i want to show you first kind of the rest of monday and then get into Tuesday from a Central Florida perspective, and then we're going to widen things out and take a look at the entire state of Florida. There we go. And if you find this helpful and you want to stay updated on all things Florida weather, you have to hit subscribe. Please hit that subscribe button. And if you find this content helpful, hit the thumbs up. It really does help us out a lot. All right, so there's 5 o'clock. Driving home from work to Central Florida, I think we're pretty good. I think we're going to be pretty good. Tomorrow morning, this is going to be Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. You're going to notice a few extra clouds, maybe a little bit of fog around. I do think we start things off dry. Note, though, as we head into the early afternoon, I think it's going to be a pretty nice day to take lunch outside, although we're going to start to heat things up. We all know it in Florida. When we're on the drier side, once we start to get into May and June, that's when we start to crank up the thermostat. So there's lunchtime. It's going to be hot and humid. There's going to be the chance for a few storms. I don't think they're going to be widespread. Storm chances on Tuesday are only going to be at 20%, and they're going to happen late in the day. But note where we're trying to fire them, them up. If you draw a line from, I'll pull out my little line here, from Daytona Beach to Sanford, Orlando, Lakeland, there's the I-4 corridor, give or take, mainly to the north and west of that. That's, I think, where we're going to start to fire up some storms again later on into the evening more often than not though your commute home from work on tuesday is going to be okay they might linger a little bit that's 11 o'clock with a stray shower around but more often than not we are going to be on the dry side on tuesday with the exception of those few little storms that get going right along and west of the i4 corridor one of the things that you noticed on monday already is the breeze we had it on sunday as we were talking about as well the breeze is going to stay elevated, and note the wind direction. Again, this was key for that coastal flooding that I alluded to earlier in the video that we're going to take a, a closer look at, and also the wave heights for the entire state of Florida coming up in just one second. But notice here that the breeze is out of the east, so we still have that persistent breeze out of the east at about 10 to 15 miles an hour through most of the day on Tuesday. That's going to be June 6th, and then gusting at times to 15 to 20 miles an hour. So it's nothing crazy. It's not going to cause any damage. It's not going to cause any power outages or things like that. But with that persistent breeze right along the coast, that is still going to keep that coastal flood threat up. And again, I'll break that down for you in just one second. In terms of the forecast for Tuesday, again, after a muggy start, we're getting back up to the upper 80s to around 90. We've been away from the 90s for a few days, and that's been thanks again to the pretty active weather pattern we've been in. Again, you can thank... What was Tropical Storm Arlene for bringing some of that tropical moisture, really helping to enhance that to help get those thunderstorms going? That's what the deal was with that. Arlene's long gone, by the way. But Tuesday in Central Florida, Palm Coast, we're back to the mid-80s, 86 in Daytona Beach. The villages were at 90 and around Apopka, Zellwood, we're going to be pushing 90. Kissimmee, St. Cloud, Point Siena. We're going to be back into the upper 80s as well. All right, I promise this. We've had some coastal flooding issues. Again, they've been minor. This is nothing crazy, but I do want to bring your attention to that. That is certainly on the high tide cycles. That tide is going to come in higher than it typically does. And I know we still have issues along the areas that were really impacted by Ian and Nicole. So again, it just highlights this even further. But through about Tuesday morning, it may be extended a little bit, this coastal flood advisory. But again, through at least Tuesday morning, Everywhere highlighted in green. That's basically the entirety of the Florida Peninsula on the eastern seaboard. But we're looking at, at central Florida from, again, Mico, from Satellite Beach, in the Melbourne Beach, Cocoa Beach, Merritt Island, New Smyrna, Daytona Beach Shores, and then at Palm Coast, Beverly Beach, Marineland. That's where we're going to have some issues again with minor coastal flooding. We're also going to have some pretty big crashing waves 
about seven to nine feet. So I'm going to kind of take this from a Florida perspective. We're nice and gentle in the Gulf of Mexico, as we typically are, unless there's a storm out there. So we have wave heights less than a foot right up to sea, right up to the shoreline there. Note where we have this green color here, kind of from about Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach through Fort Pierce, up the Space Coast, and then towards the First Coast as well. Note we have wave heights kind of crashing at about six to nine feet. So that's also going to help to give it a little more oomph for those waves to make it in there. So again, just keep that in mind that we are going to have those crashing waves. As promised, if you're traveling or happen to be tuning into this video, we're also putting this. This is on YouTube and on clickorlando.com, new six. I wanted to give a perspective for the entire state of Florida. We always get questions again, what's going on in Jacksonville? What's going on in Pensacola? How about Miami, St. Petersburg? So we're going to break it down from a state perspective for you. Notice 5 o'clock on Monday, most of Central Florida, again, we already just talked about that. The panhandle looking dry as well. We do have a few scattered thunderstorms just inland of the Miami beaches and Fort Lauderdale. Southwest Florida, a couple of thunderstorms around that kind of push towards the Gulf Coast of Florida. Tomorrow, most of us start off dry. I do want to give you a heads up, though, in Miami, you see a few of these thunderstorms coming on shore, so it could be rocking early on Tuesday. That's going to be 8 o'clock on June 6th. And then as we kind of fire things up into the afternoon, showed you this before with some of those storms right smack dab in the middle of the Florida Peninsula through the Orlando area, Kissimmee St. Cloud. Most of these are going to be inland. That's going to be a nice little sea breeze collision there for you late Tuesday evening. Notice, though, most of us across the Florida Peninsula, or the Florida Panhandle, I should say, looking dry, and around Jacksonville, and then towards Fort Myers, we are also looking dry. The Florida Keys looking pretty good. A few little thunderstorms popping over the Bahamas, but that's all she wrote. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit subscribe, and if you're watching on ClickOrlando.com or the New 6 app, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.